In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a cloth object from a skeletal mesh. Let's start off in the content browser, and you see SKM cloth. Now, I don't want to change anything about the original mesh here, so I'm just going to right click and create a copy, which I'll call SKM underscore cloth underscore zero one. Click OK. Now, let's double click on this new skeletal mesh, and this will take us into the Anim Set editor. Now this is the mesh itself. This is really just a grid full of vertices. The more vertices you have, the more lifelike your cloth will appear, but you can overdo it. So you don't really want thousands upon thousands of vertices. Now I'm going to show you the skeleton by clicking on the show skeleton button. We'll also show the bone names. And here's how this works. The topmost row of vertices shown from this view would be skin to bone one. And these would be the vertices that we would anchor in space. So we could make this actually look like it's being hung up as if it were like a flag. Now all of the other vertices on our sheet have been skinned to bone two, and it's this bone that we will designate as our cloth bone. Now let's jump into the properties pane down to the mesh tab. Let's make sure to check for CPU skinning, and we'll scroll down from here into the cloth properties. Now the very first thing I'm gonna do is add bone two as a cloth bone. So let's add an item to the cloth bones and set this name to bone zero now there's just a few properties that we really need to put into place to make this work. The first one is going to be to enable the cloth bend constraint. It'll just make this look, uh, it'll make it look a lot more like cloth. So we'll switch that on. Now we're going to take the bend stiffness and we're going to set this to 0.5. We're going to take the cloth thickness and set this to 1 instead of 0.5, which will kind of cut down on the amount of rippling. Let's take the cloth damping and we'll pull this down to 0. Now we're going to scroll down and just for the fun of it, we're going to enable cloth tearing and set the tear factor down to two. Now these are just some simple demonstration uh, properties. If you really want to get in here and play with all the different properties, there are a lot of different things you can try out. But even at this point, we can come up here to the toolbar and click toggle cloth. And you see this is already behaving as if it were a sheet of cloth. Very, very cool. Now let's get this placed in the level. We'll go ahead and close out of the NM set editor. I'm going to make sure that SKM cloth 01 is selected here in the content browser. In fact, let's go ahead and save our physics assets package. I'll close out the content browser. And now over here on this shelf, let's just right click and I'll choose add actor. And we're going to add this in as a skeletal mesh. So add skeletal mesh like so. We need to get this kind of lined up appropriately. So if we rotate the mesh 90 degrees around Z, so let's come up here, we'll grab a rotation widget, and I'm just going to spin this around 90 degrees. Now I'm also going to, well, at this point we could hang it down, but I guess if we leave it out like so, then it'll sweep down nicely as if it were a sheet of cloth. But let's open up the properties. We can get those set up. So let's expand Skeletal Mesh Actor, expand Skeletal Mesh Component, and we have Cloth. Now, the first thing we're going to check is Cloth Awake on Startup. So it's right here. Now, I'll go ahead and expand these over so it's a little easier to read. So this means this will actually start behaving like Cloth as soon as we begin. We also need to set up cloth enable simulation or enable cloth simulation down here. So we'll go ahead and check that. Now also we need to set up our collision channel. So currently we have cloth RB collide with channels and nothing is selected. So make sure you set up default and gameplay physics in case you want to play with this with something like a K actor. So now let's test this out. So we choose play from here. And immediately the thing begins to fall and rips. Now, if you don't want that to happen, you can scale up your cloth. Just with the settings that we have, a really small cloth is going to tear fairly easily. So go ahead and pull this out after scaling this up a bit. Now let's try this again. And it looks like I chose the wrong edge to hang to this thing. So let's fix that real quick. So I'm going to grab our guy will rotate him around 180 degrees. There we go. Now let's try this one more time. 
And there we go. Now he hangs and kind of flops down like so. Now, just to show how cool this really is, I'm going to take this crate that he just fell into. Let's right-click and choose Finding Content Browser. Now, with that selected, I'll right-click on it again and choose Replace With. And we're going to choose Add Rigid Body. So this is no longer a static mesh. It's actually a K-actor that we can pick up and use to manipulate the cloth. So now let's test this out one more time. And there we go. So now we can get the physics gun out and lift up this crate. And we can see how the cloth behaves. Now we can't actually grab the cloth on our own. But we can kind of sling it around with our little K-actor. If we go too hard, we can actually rip the cloth, which looks really cool. And it's a lot of fun to play with. So get in here and try this out. Try different settings. Get some behaviors that you like. But that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.